Hey mages, welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be looking at some of these top new meta decks that are hitting standard best of one at the moment. Now with the new set just released, the Lost Caverns of Ixalan, we hopefully get some spicy cards going in here. And for me, I've played a bit on the rank ladder and it's certainly shaking it a bit up, and which is very refreshing and lovely to see. It was getting a bit stale. I love it when the new set comes out, put some spice back into it, and um, yeah, we can all enjoy playing standard again. But today, these are different meta decks, some of them. Um, really interesting to see, like people are trying different archetypes and everything like that. So these have all had, you know, really good percentages, lots of uh, gameplay played with them. Uh, 500 to 1,000 uh, matches have been tested with some of these, not by myself personally, but I get those stats from various different MTGA Zone and, and GG Untapped and everything like that. And for Find the best decks for you to copy and paste and then go and give them your chance you know see if you can take them up the ladder maybe to mythic or something like that that is what i want you to do so when we uh, after you've seen the all the decks at the end of the video let me know stay to the end watch the vins make your decision which ones you're going to play and then let me know in the comments how you get on with it and which deck you're going to play as well so without further ado let's get on to looking at today's decks so today's first deck is a very cool rakdos ramp deck now first deck this has a lot of really powerful cards in. As you can see at the top end, what are we going to be ramping into? So, Atali, the best dinosaur probably around, even though we've just had an influx of dinosaurs in there at the moment. None new dinosaurs, you know, no new dinosaurs are making this, but Atali is just a game winner, isn't it? It's very power, 7-7 seven, seven with Trample. Also has that uh, little transform at the bottom, but I've never transformed it myself. I've always got the job done when a Tyler gets in there and you're exiling cards from the top of the libraries and then just casting them as well for nothing. I absolutely love Vitaly. Very powerful. Legendary. If you can chain into these as well, it just makes it really good, especially if your opponent is playing, you know, some really powerful cards as well, and you get to steal them. That is absolutely amazing. But also at the top end, we have some, you know, Breach the Multiverse, Powerful card again, million 10 cards for each player, choosing a creature or planeswalker, getting the best of it. So you really are in this Rakdos ramp deck taking potentially your opponent's best cards. And let's face it, no one likes that, do they? No one likes their cards being taken. So Breach the Multiverse and Atali do that job very well. And um, yeah, two very powerful cards. Also at the top, which I love to see in here, is Chandra's Hope Beacon. Doesn't really get played enough for me. Uh, the plus two add two mana in combination. So you can, you know, you've got big spells here. So you could use that if you need to. Or potentially to play another smaller spell. Or a bit of removal spell or something like that. Plus one exile on the top five cards. To enter, you may play an instant or sorcery. Now, we do have a few instants and sorceries in there. 11 instants and eight sorceries. So 19 cards to hit with that, which is pretty decent. You can see the CMC average on this deck as well. 4.3, so it's quite high. Which is why it runs 26 lands as well. Um, also in there is Virtue of Persistent. Nice bit of early removal with Lockthwain. And then what you're milling away with the breach and stuff like that. Persistence will just nick it. If you lose your Atalis or something like that, you can get that back into play for you yourself as well. Other creatures in the deck, we've got a single Sheoldridge in there. If we can flip it to the scriptures, it's good. Because that's another way to take all creature cards from all graveyards when you're milling with breach. This flipped into the scriptures is perfect for this deck. If not, you've got the 4 5 with Medis on there. When it enters, they have to sack a non token creature or planeswalk as well. So, none of those little wedded announcement tokens or anything like that are going to go. Uh, if you're playing like the dinosaur against the dinosaur decks, you might get a big dino out of it. But normally, um, you're going to get something, you know, fairly decent with this. There is a Decadent Dragon in there as a 4 of as well. Expansion Taste, exile on the top two cards of opponent's library. As you can see, it's a ramp deck that really attacks opponents as well. It's a cool deck, I must admit. And then you're going to be going with a 4-4 Flying Trample Dragon uh, for four mana. When it attacks, create a treasure token as well. So treasure tokens are very helpful if you can get this down early. Because if you're missing your ramp, we've got a single Iron Crag in there. We've got a couple of Solistus as well. Um, make treasures with big score which is nice as well, so more ways to potentially ramp in as well. Um, you can get that down and hopefully get to some of your powerful game-winning cards in this deck. Removal. We have a cut down in there, single cut down, three go for the throats, three Sheldris Edict as well. A couple of Brothers End that can attack uh, artifacts as well, but three damage is a nice early sweeper against Mono White potentially, Mono Red, anything like that. And then we have Burn Down the House that we can use for the Little Devils if we want to put a bit of pressure on or need some blockers. Or we've got five damage to each creature and each Planeswalker. So this is our pseudo Rathbut 
you know, you've got to bear in mind some of the dinos do get very big, but still, this is nice for the deck and um, can do two jobs, which is very nice. Uh, land base for the deck, lots of different lands. Blackleaf is, you know, heavy rare, heavy rare lands, as you do see in these top meta decks. This isn't budget version decks. Now, if you didn't see the recent video from a couple of days ago, which was zero rare new decks that I've put together for this new standard, please go and check that out. There'll be a link down below. Um, after you watch this video, please go and show that some love appreciate and get yourself and just try some really fun decks and you'll be surprised how powerful they can be with zero rares as well uh, but yeah this is mecta ruckdust ramp uh you can see i've got this one crafted i've been enjoying playing it and i would definitely recommend giving this one a go but let's get on to the next deck now we're going to pirates is it pirates getting some sweet results um, this is some, obviously some lovely new cards from Ixalon. Um, one cool card is Breach's Eager Pillager. 3-3 three, three first drive for 3 mana. It is legendary, but when it attacks, you, know, you choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn. So a little bit of ramp in a treasure token. Target creature can't block this turn, or you exile the top guarded library and play it. So this has, you know, great stats. 3-3 three, three, and has first strike as well, which is, you know, really nice as well, killing some of those early creatures. And you get a choice of those abilities, which is... Um, you know, those are really nice. Treasure tokens are always helpful. Getting through with some damage is nice when target creature can't block in case they've got that single blocker or anything like that. So Breaches is a really sweet goblin pirate. And just look at it. Yeah, it just looks naughty, doesn't it? That pirate holding that skull up as well. Um, also in the deck, let's have a look at what creatures are. Now, first of all, we're going to have a look. It's a heavy creature deck where you see like... Um, decks like this where they have creature types this has 26 in there and has 26 pirates out of the 26 as well a low cmc though only 1.9 so it's, it's stretching going here with 21 lands which is you know rather low but it has a very low cmc as you can see the top end is a couple of four drops but there's a plethora of like one drops and two drops in this as well so the next creature we look at is the Lastness. Cuts out Lastness, Human Pirate, Flying, Ward 1. Nice, not legendary, which is sweet as well. Ends battlefield for each player. Choose up to one artifact or creature that controls. For as long as this is on the battlefield, uh, the Chosen Permanent becomes a treasure artifact as well. It loses all its abilities. So you basically get to take that out. And they might have to use that treasure artifact as well. So yeah, then it goes. But four of these in there. And the Ward 1 helps with this down as well. So they're going to have to pay a, a little bit extra to get rid of our Lastness. Then we have, oh, I love Malcolm. Malcolm's in standard now. Love it. 2-1, flash flying. Combat damage for player, but a chorus counter. And then you could draw and discard if they're four or more. Um, without paying its mana cost as well. You may discard a card without paying, you know, cast it, which is really, really strong. And it's a flash flyer. 2-1. I've been using this in my blue-white flash deck. And, yeah, I'm really liking Malcolm. I pulled a foil one in paper as well, which is pretty, pretty sweet. Um, this other human pirate comes in. Lots of new cards in this deck. Very much, you know, definitely different to the last deck um but this ends battle look at the top four cards you may be an artifact about a power card so very on theme for this deck you get a two one for two and then siphoning through your deck which is helpful to go and try and find what you need as well and you obviously four four of these in there are really good uncommon for this type of um, deck the Shuna's in. So I, I've played this in, in a different deck. I played it in mono blue. Uh, when it's on the field early, it's really, really good. That's what I found because it's only crew one, uh, three, four. And when you get to the coach of the crews, they get to explore as well. So go for your deck, maybe get a counter on. Um, but because it's crew one and you're getting that three, four, it makes it very, very good, I feel. Anything like your Spyglass Siren can crew it straight away down turn one, turn two. You've got your Goblin Tomb Raider as well with the one power uh, turn one that can then follow into that turn two. Um, so, yeah, with the crew one, this this is a really probably quite underrated card. And um, I was a bit aminar on it when I didn't draw it, draw it, and it played. It wasn't so impactful, but getting it early on is very, very strong. Then we have Captain Storm, the Raider, which is the legendary creature. Just a couple of these in there. Ends a battle under control, put a 1 1 counter on target, pirate control. And as you saw, we have 26 pirates in here causing damage to our opponent. Um, other, you know, red spells that generally go in and is it deck? Kumanu's good. Second one comes with a creature, and it makes a creature as well. Obviously, not a pirate, but still a very strong one drop. And then when you're playing, you've got treasures and artifacts and stuff. Vault Surge is a you know really good bit of removal. Last card was the Frenzy at the top end. Just a couple of these. One less to cast for each creature you attack, so potentially could cost one mana. Five damage deals with Shelly, doesn't it? Sheldred, that lovely five damage to get rid of that off the field, and probably some really good dinos, because they are about. Now, 
This, obviously, is a creature type deck, so Cavern of Souls can come in here, choosing pirates, be a nightmare for all, you know, any type of creature type deck where you've got heavy light, like we've got pirates in here. The Cavern of Souls makes them uncountable, which is just a nightmare. You know, the control decks are going to have to be running Field of Ruin, Demolition as well, to be able to deal with Cavern of Souls, because if these decks really do take off, control is just just dies doesn't it you know you, you can't count or anything but you do have your rafts which obviously does help in that but you need them quickly aggro decks like this can really put you under the pressure um, but pirates very interesting to see lovely to see this type of deck in the meta as well and doing very well um, but yeah our pirates for you have to have a look but now let's get on to the next deck so we have two different types of dino decks now in the meta. So we have the Gruul version here, first of all, and then we'll have a look at the Naya version. They do run different cards. Uh, dinos are very strong, I found, um, and just very consistent. 32 creatures. So with the decks that run Raps and everything like that, you, they're just going to keep coming back, these dinos. Um, doesn't run... They're not all dinos. Only 24 dinos in there for, like, you know, the synergies for three sorceries and one artifact. Interesting that this deck doesn't run any instant spells whatsoever. So that's, you know, really interesting. You're looking to ramp out. You've got the Ixalos Lawkeeper. If you get that turn down, turn one, can only ramp in, you know, for dinos and stuff like that. Then you're going your Belligerent. You've got more ramping Intrepid as well. One mana of any color for two mana is really strong. And attacking Graveyards as well is is pretty nice. Now, this, uh, this card is just so strong. 6-6 six, six for three mana. You do need that other Dino on there as it gets stunned out. But you've got so many Dinos you can see. So, you know, even this doesn't come down turn three. It's still even turn four. You're getting a 6-6 six, six for three, you know, three mana, which is super strong. And you can get multiples on there. Now, what's good with all these as well is Polanis. I'm skipping over a creature here because it gives all your Dinos haste. So once you get this down late game, you're dropping a 6-6 six, six with haste. Oh, it's just damage personified. Uh, they've just put so many strong Dinos in there. Hulking Raptor. War 2, get an extra bit of mana, a couple of bit of mana at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase as well to just, you know, ramp into these. Bone Horde Dracosaur, flying first strike dragon, as it should be. But it's a dinosaur type as well, so you're getting a flying first strike 5-5 five five that can make three ones as well. It's insane. You've got Trumpeting Carnosaur that enters Discover 5, and Discover 5 seems really strong from what I've seen as well. And then still getting a 7-6 Trampler. Has an ability to discard as well. I love to see Cogla in this. Some decks are running it, some decks aren't. I've been running it in mine. I think a 7-7 seven seven that can come down with Trample and Haste is super strong or fight or discard whatever you want and then of course atali atali at the top end just we spoke about this in the first deck the Rakdos ramp this is just really nice now this deck just ramps into absolute power he also runs a single skull spawn nexus in this one so this costs x less to cast where x is the greater power among creatures you control which obviously we have a lot of power in this deck and then whenever one or more non-token creatures you control die create a fungus dinosaur equal to its base power and toughness <sighs> mental double target creatures power until end of turn as well when you've got big tramplers just seems like disgusting coming in 14 14 potentially oh it's absolutely hilarious so the little bit of removal that it has is the triumph chomp three of these um sorcery speed and then that was the auto but it's just swing big creatures turn them sideways and just start stomping and smashing of course this runs the cavern of souls you don't want those spells countered and then just a mixture of lands as well but yeah this is a very aggressive and very powerful deck but let's get on to the naya version it is a bit different as well so if we look to the Naya version, it's Naya literally for one card. Now, I thought this would run Get Lost or something like that, but it doesn't. It just runs Gishaf, Sun's Avatar, as a single one. So, you know, if you haven't got it, swap it, see what you want. But this runs uh, Fight Rigging, which is different to the other deck. It's got a lot of the same cards, you know, putting this into the same bracket of that previous one. But the slight different, it runs Gauter as well, which is nice. Very powerful 12-12 Trampler. Put any number of creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield. It says creature as well, which is important. It's not just dinos. This runs 27, so slightly less. We've got three sorceries and we have the four enchantments with a CMC less as well, 3.4. So obviously, fight rigging, 
very good. Hideaway fire, beginning of combat turn. When you get that seven greater power, you may may cast that now. You know, in this deck, it's going to be very easy. You still got the four hammer skulls at six, you know, six sixes. The ramp, the same, the law keeper, the pentologist, um, still with chomp as that bit of removal because it's on theme. And it literally just runs a few different cards. Rampaging Raptor, Trample Haste as well. Um, so you see it's a mixture. You could probably mixture these two decks up if you haven't got all the cards. But obviously they won't get, you know, it's not you know, definite that they get the performance and the, and the stats that obviously these have been getting, which is, you know, up to 60% win rates. And they've been tried and tested over 500 plus games or whatever, but been doing very well. Uh, but yeah, this deck, I'm not going to say too much more about this because there isn't much difference. It runs one less Cavern of Souls for some reason. doesn't run the playset, runs four. Um, but I suppose that's literally because 19 dinosaurs, which is still a lot. Um, but they dropped one, whereas the previous deck obviously ran more. So, um, But if you want to run your fourth, I'm not going to say... You know, I don't think that would make too much difference to the deck and the way it performs. But yeah, slightly different. A couple of different cards splashing the white for Gisath in this. Uh, but yeah, Naya Dinos. The Dinos are everywhere in standard at the moment. So the last deck we look at is my sort of deck. It's an Esper mid-range deck. Um, really, you know, Rafine is a very good card, as we as we know. Um, it runs only a couple of new cards, but this obviously does, is a deck that always performs really well. So the new additions that we're going to look at that it's putting in is just a single get lost. Um, I found this to be really good, and the map tokens are not a really bad thing to give to opponent. Um, two mana instant speed, enchantments, creatures, or planeswalkers. That choice is just really, really strong. And it's another deck that runs this, what I think is a bit of an underrated card, but maybe it's not because people are using it, is the Shuna. Crew one, tacking in, and then you get the Explorer as well. So you've got the early creatures in here. Uh, forgot the other new card that I've been loving. Um, Deep Cavern Bat. So 1-1, one, one, good for a crew in as well. Ends battlefield, look at target opponent's hand, then you get to exile that until this leaves the battlefield. It's evasion, it's got flying and lifelink as well. So still a very, very strong deck. Now, it still runs like the legendaries. You've got your Denix, you've got your Urtis, counter or kill, whatever you want with that as well. Very nice removal, cut down. Uh, but what I like about uh, the version of this as well, Esper Midrange, is the virtue of loyalty. I love it. Putting that 2 2 in, and when the virtue of loyalty is on there as the enchantment, it just gets, builds everything up just so quick with your flying and ward one, putting the counters on each time. And obviously, this can get counters itself making the tokens with wedding announcement the wandering emperor and everything it just builds up everything so much which is why it runs the full four of in this deck it's a very strong card version loyalty uh it's between that and and the black enchantment they're definitely my two favorites i couldn't it's hard to switch between the two but i just do yeah i love them just both as much as they are um removal we've got go for the throat it's like i said cut down get lost uh no mass removal in this but we do have a you know, ways to deal with creatures. Uh, Wandering Emperor can do with it as well with the minus two. And then, like I said, you've got Urtar, which deals with it as well. So still plenty of removal. And this deck, you know, just has a bit of everything. It has the card draw, potential more with Mastermind, counter spells, attack opponents, you know, hand, stopping cards in graveyards. It just has a bit of everything in this deck, which is why it's so consistent. We all thought Plaza of Heroes was going to be up for the Banhammer, but not. This runs two now, not the four. Um, but then so many other rare lands. I mean, this is just a rare fest. Esper Mid Range is always a rare fest. But like I said, always chopping in the good results in here. When you've got Rafine, it's got the evasion, it's hard deck. But with some big flying, you know, dinosaurs around, maybe it's not going to get through so much, but it's still knocking in the results. Um, so it really depends what deck you're more comfortable with, whether you like playing this type of control deck or you like playing creatures swing sideways. But please let me know which of these five new meta decks that you're going to play. I'd love to know which ones you'd liked and which ones you're going to give a try. And then let me know how you know high on the rankings you get as well. Hopefully you get to some mythic um, mythic ranking and start smashing smashing your opponents, which would be really good to see. Now, I always just want to give a shout out to my um, patrons for this. They give me all that extra support. So if you want to become a Total MTG patron, you get to see the deck list early, everything like that. 
um, sometimes play with me as well. Um, we play arena and stuff like that. If the program matches up, of course, we know what that's like. Um, but yeah, some tears there. Just go and check it out down below. And uh, all, as I always say as well, if you want to get these cards in paper, check out the channel sponsors, which is Card Market. Just go and click on the link and go and have a look at their site. Um, they are the largest marketplace in Europe for buying cards. But yeah, I just want to say thank you again. Liking the videos, commenting. I just appreciate that so much. Hello to the new subs that we picked up from the last few videos as well. Welcome to the channel. And you lot, enjoy the rest of your day.